Now that I am satisfied in my conquest of Memory of Chaos, it's time to do the same for Pure Fiction. Here's how I did it. We're skipping right to stage two. Trust me, you're not missing out on anything since the enemies are under leveled. That's one of the first positives. Compared to MOC, which have max level enemies at 95, the highest level enemy we'll face here is 85. After spending way too much brain power thinking of a team, we begin. Oh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Some of my viewers may not know what Pure Fiction is, so allow me to explain. Pure Fiction is what I call call an AoE playground. For each half, you have three waves of enemies. Each wave has a certain number of enemies total. Only five can be on the screen at once and will be replaced after killing them until the wave is finished. Interestingly, I'd say Pure Fiction takes the opposite approach of Memory of Chaos. Usually in MOC, you primarily focus on the bosses and elite enemies, but here it's all about clearing the trash mobs ASAP then how do we deal with the elites and bosses that show up? Well, that's where effects and buffs come in. The effect is always active, which for this phase activates by accumulating damage from follow-up attacks. For buffs, each phase grants three different ones to choose from. You can pause to read what they do. I will edit an icon on the right side of the screen so that you'll know which one I'm using. Lastly, no matter the stage, the points distribution is the same. Beat waves one and two and you get 10,000 points each. If you manage to beat wave three completely, it's 20,000 points. The end goal for each stage is to get 60,000 total points. For the second half, Serval is my main AoE damage dealer. This team also breaks enemy toughness, so it helps build up Shuei's passive for her sub DPS role. I save Shuei's ultimate for the first T-Rex in wave 3. We can just skip to the next stage, because once I have 6,000, I always let autoplay finish the rest. First half, Clara and Serval DPS duo. Despite being the destruction path, Clara's skill and ultimate counters provide enough AoE. This is really good for the second wave of trash mobs who all have a physical weakness. Of course, the downside of this team is no healer for Clara, and without her signature light cone, Clara has no self-sustain. D, if only there was a certain sustain character that would pair well with Clara. Unlike Pure Fiction, deaths aren't as severe. At a bare minimum, I need 3,000 points each half, so this is fine. For the second half, I ran Blade and Jing Liu. My thought process was, well, Blade has a follow-up attack, which can be triggered faster by the Jing Liu comp, but I realized there was a huge problem. You may think it's my damage output, but it's actually because most of the enemies are slower than my team, meaning Blade isn't getting hit more often to trigger his follow-up, which does lead to a major DPS loss. Damn, I'm that close. Oh, is really close. Yeah. Uh, that does kind of suck. Yeah, I guess maybe Blade is not, even though he does follow ups, it's not good enough. It was basically that second phase is where I lost Steam. Yeah. Alright, new strategy. Let's try an Embibiter Lune Hyper Carry for the first half. I got slightly more points than the Clara team, so I have another option at least. For the second half, I know this looks janky AF. Let me cook. Blade's Enhanced Basic is enough AoE for this, so let's use the same logic of Serval and Asta to help breaking toughness so that Shuei can sub DPS. Despite this, I still barely made it to the third wave and got a worse total score. Well, when you don't know what to do, it's time to consider Salt guides. Now, I don't know who cooked on the Game 8 website with this first team comp suggestion, but I have these characters, so I may as well try it. They didn't leave any description why, but I think the logic is that the Herda in Himiko duo with this buff breaks the trash mob so often that it constantly triggers the effect. Meanwhile, Branya helps boost Clara's damage, cleanse debuffs, and action forwards her turn. If this team can get 4,000 points in the first half, then we'll be able to take it easy in the other. Sadly, that's not what happened. This team was not in the guide though. It is another homebrew, but this time we got Ranmei. Nothing can go wrong with her and the team. Plus the upside is while Serval deals with most of the trash mobs, most of the hits the enemies get off are gonna go towards Blade. Alright, just one stage left now. In stage 4 first half, I used my same team as stage 2 and got my worst score yet and the second half was equally as bad. However, for once, I'm not gonna blame the devs or the game, this one is on me. Luckily, there are two easy fixes. We can replace Gwynefen with Herda, which I should have done the first time. I realized with how often Himiko was breaking with Asta and Ranmei's help, Gwynefen just didn't get a turn to play. Again, it should have been the obvious first choice. Yeah, I'll admit, this first half team is definitely the premium pure fiction team. I could have just auto-played this. Himiko and Herda duo practically do that already. 
Interestingly, Branya's toughness is protected until every other enemy in Wave 3 is dead, but she can only delay the inevitable. Oh, nice. Max score for once. As painful as it is to sack my boy temporarily, Serval Hyper Carry is all I need for the second half, and I'll just skip forward through the second half. I just needed to make it to wave 3, and we already know how Sir Ball is goaded for this. Final thoughts. Did Max Clear and Pure Fiction change my opinion that it's sh** and boring? Not completely. Hold on, hold on, let me explain. Since Pure Fiction is centered around how many mobs you can clear as soon as possible, with a much tighter cycle requirement, the AoE restriction and requirement severely limits your team combo options. It also shares the same issues as MLC, with the current blessing, controlling, and fair the meta and the current enemy lined up is tailored toward the current banner characters in some way. While this game mode is not as fun to me as MOC, I think Hoyoverse has done a genius move of scheduling when each mode refreshes so that we endgame players always have something to do. That's just my opinion, let me know yours in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe for future challenge content. I'm Dragonlord Lita and until then, on to my next video.